good afternoon everyone today we are going to discuss some scenarios on female and uh, functional urology thank you for the trainee who has given consent to record this session so that it will be a good revision tool your time starts now you have a 55 year old lady presenting with history of frequency and urgency symptoms in the clinic how are you going to evaluate her I'll see this patient in a dedicated functional urology clinic with the urology nurse specialist present um, and where the patient will be asked to uh, complete a, a three-day bladder diary um, prior to the clinic and to arrive with a full bladder to provide urinalysis and a residual bladder volume measurement. Um, I'll then take a focused history um, to establish uh, what her predominant LUTs are between storage and voiding, uh, any episodes of incontinence um, and the trigger for this, um, the number of daily uh, micturition or incontinence episodes um, and whether she's using any pads. Um, I'll establish the level of uh, bother and effects on quality of life and if she's been charged with any medications. Um, I'll establish her past surgical and neurological history um, and I will also establish her tobacco use and fluid intake. Um, I'll then perform a chaperone physical examination, measuring the BMI clinic. Um, I'll elicit any abdominal or loin pain, tenderness or palpable masses. Um, and with the patient's verbal consent, um, I'll perform an internal vaginal examination to look for evidence of atrophic vaginitis, um, any pelvic organ prolapse, urethral diverticulum, and also the neurological sensation through the perineal examination. How will you do a vaginal examination? Um, so I'll place the patient in a left lateral position um, and I'll use a sim speculum. Okay, what are all the things you look for? So I'll look for evidence of atrophic vaginitis, um, urethral prolapse, um, pelvic organ prolapse, um, urethral diverticulum, um, and um, any evidence, for example, of fistula or uterine prolapse. Okay. Examination wise, she's fine. She's quite symptomatic with uh, frequency, urgency, and also as you questioning her, she says she also has some incontinence during the urgency episodes. How are you going to evaluate her? Um, so um, the initial investigations that I asked for would be a urine dipstick analysis to exclude UTI, but also hematuria. Um, I will perform residual bladder volume measurements in the clinic. I'll analyze a three-day bladder diary, um, and I'll send off a urine, midstream urine specimen for culture if indicated. Is there any specific questionnaire available for these patients? Um, for um, so, if the patient is having urgent, having incontinence, then there is the ICIQ uh, short form questionnaire as well that can be used to provide an objective measure of their symptoms. So, what are all the questions asked in that? Um, so, this asks about questions related to the last four weeks. Um, it asks the patient um, how often they leak, um, which scores from zero to five. Um, how much they think they leak, which scores from zero to six. Um, there is a third question asking about the level of bother on their life, which scores from zero to 10. And then there's a final question, which doesn't offer a score, but asks the patient about the situations and when they leak. Is there any other questionnaire available in general for storage symptoms? Um, I think there is the overactive bladder questionnaire, but I can't remember what the components of that are. Okay, and um, do you know what questions or um, how they assess it or you want to leave it now? Um, I can't recall. Okay, we leave it for now. Okay, her urine dipstick shows no evidence of any infection. She is scoring quite high in her ICIQ OAB questionnaire. We'll come back to that during the feedback session. Her blood investigations were normal. What further things you will advise her? So our first will advise from conservative uh, and life conservative measurement so through lifestyle advice, um, which applicable will include um, fluid modification to avoid bladder irritant beverages. Um, I will um, advise on weight loss and uh, smoking cessation if applicable. Um, given that she's a, over the age of 55, um, I want to ensure she has no atrophic vaginitis um, and I'll therefore 
Council about um, topical estrogen replacement if necessary. Um, I will, however, also counsel about bladder retraining, uh, providing embarrassing information leaflet on this, and also referring her to a pelvic floor physiotherapist to carry this out for a minimum of six weeks. Okay. What advice the pelvic floor therapist will give her? Um, so they are likely to provide the same advice in terms of lifestyle measures. Um, but they'll advise her as to the means of bladder retraining um, and the different ways this can be achieved. Um, one of these could be um, asking the patient to void regularly um, every hour, even if there's no desire to void, um, but then on a weekly basis to prolong this by 15 minutes, um, thus um, retraining the bladder um, that the, pyre, the brain has control over mixturition. Okay. Uh, how will you explain Kegel's exercise to the patient? Um, so I'll explain to the patient that um, if this is to be performed, then they're to um, perform uh, contractions of the um, pelvic floor as if they're trying to inhibit um, inhibit micturition, um, and that this should be carried out at least with at least eight contractions uh, at least three times a day and for at least three months. Okay. And uh, how will you define overactive bladder? This is a clinical syndrome consisting of urinary urgency and frequency uh, with or without uh, urinary urge incontinence and where there is an absence of any other pathologies. How will you classify overactive bladder? Um, so this can be either dry um, with no incontinence or wet with associated incontinence. Okay. What do you mean by detrusor overactivity? This is a urodynamic diagnosis um, characterized by the presence of involuntary detrusor contractions during the filling phase of urodynamics, um, and in which can either be um, spontaneous or provoked. Okay, so you have advised her lifestyle changes and uh, pelvic floor muscle exercises. Not much improvement. What is your next stage? Um, my next stage of management will be to counsel the patients about pharmacological measures. Um, and this would be by starting off with anticholinergic medications. Um, I'll counsel the patients about the potential side effects, um, including um, the dry mouth, constipation, blurred vision, and urinary retention. Um, and I'll also ensure that she does not have any um, contraindications to treatment with this class of medications. Okay, so what medication you're going to start her on? Um, so I will start her on um, solifenacin at a dose of 10 milligrams once a day. Why not oxybutynin? Um, so the um, oxybutynin does have the lowest acquisition cost, um, but it also has the greatest effect on cognitive, cognitive impairment. Um, so given her age, um, I would be less inclined to start with an oxybutynin. She's only 55. Um, so what age you are a bit concerned when you are starting oxybutynin? Um, so it's a non it's a non selective um, anticholinergic. Um, so um, it has the potentially great effect on cognitive um, impairment. Um, if okay, if if you are starting solifenacin, what contraindications you will be aware of? Um, so I want to ensure that the patient does not have a history of acute angle closure glaucoma. Um, by senior gravis, um, that the residual volume uh, is not exceeding more than, I think, 200, 200 mils, um, and also that they don't have any uh, history of bowel obstruction, um, active ulcerative colitis, or severe um, reflux or esophagitis. Okay, so how are you going to review her? Um, given that I am starting her on a new medication, then I will review her again in another four weeks' time um, with a repeat overactive bladder questionnaire. Okay. Uh, the questionnaire shows she has only very mild to moderate improvement. Symptomatically, she is still struggling. What is your next step? Um, my next step would be to um, offer um, 
either an alternative anticholinergic. Um, so the EAU guidelines outlined that in this scenario, um, the um, dose could be changed, but she's already the maximum dose um, to offer an alternative anticholinergic to add mirabegron um, or to switch to mirabegron completely. Um, so in this scenario, I will um, add mirabegron onto her prescription. Uh, okay, we'll stop there, uh, Piyush. Um, good presentation. Anything from your side before I give you the feedback? Um, no, I think it, the points to improve on would be the overactive bladder questionnaire and then how Kegel's exercises are performed. Um, I think um, I think I'll probably modify my answer in terms of the initial anticholinergic. Um, I think that the guidelines aren't very clear. They just say the lowest acquisition cost. Mm. Um, but I'll have to modify what I do in practice to the, the exam. So probably I'll start with oxybutynin or trospium next time. And yeah. then I can move on to others. Yeah, the, the best thing is not only for this table, in general, number one, try to say what you do. Number two, try to substantiate why you do that both things yeah. okay so you are tested on your knowledge your clinical application and your communication communication you guys are absolutely fine because of repeated training speaking i think you will be hitting the ball absolutely clear so how i will present this is i will start the patient on solifenacin as my first choice my dose of choice is five milligrams after three to four weeks, once the patient is comfortable, if there are no bothersome side effects, the dose can be increased to 10 milligrams. At least six weeks trial should be given before we declare the medicine is not good for her or change the medication. I am aware that nice guidelines, you need to bring nice guidelines here. If you want yeah. to mention the year, it's 2019. As per the 2019 guidelines, I am aware that we need to use the drug with low acquisition cost. Oxybutynin is the one with low acquisition cost, but in my practice, we prefer solifenacin due to better side effect profile. Yeah. So by this, number one, you are absolutely clear in your knowledge. Number two, you are proving that you are good in applying your knowledge to your clinical circumstances. Nobody can just follow nice guidelines only. And uh, in this process, you brought her age. Nice guidelines says you can't give oxybutynin immediate release for elderly women. So still you can give like a slow release tablets in elderly women and the woman what we are discussing is 55 year old, she's not fitting into say 70s and 80s. So she's yeah. still suitable for oxybutynin. You can give solifenacin, but make sure that you bring your knowledge also. Uh, don't get worried that I'm saying something, but it's not in my practice. So you, in the reflection said, next time I will bring in oxybutynin. So examiner may play the card in a different way. Examiner may say, are you sure? You definitely going to start oxybutynin for her. That's what do we do in the practice. Then you will take a back step and say, no, I will start on solifenacin, yeah. isn't it? So the best answer is tell yeah. what you do and then substantiate with the uh, evidence saying that I am aware that NICE guidelines 2019 mentions about the low acquisition cost which is oxybutynin in my area, in my yeah. deanery or whatever in my CCG, but I prefer solifenacin because of the side effect profile. That ticks all the boxes. Your knowledge, application of knowledge, both are ticked nicely. And um, just taking you back to the first question, uh, include the past history of radiation. I'm very picky on yeah. that. You mentioned everything, but the radiation is the only thing you have uh, missed out. Um, yeah. UTI, again, you mentioned it. I'm happy with that. Estrogenization, you have mentioned. I mean, you haven't used the word estrogenization of vagina, but you said ruling out atropic vaginitis. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, you should mention little thing about urethra, how the urethra looks. Is there any tenderness, scarring, masses, losing out, you ruling out um, caruncle or anything like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, ICU, ICIQ, OAB questionnaire. I know we are not doing that much in our practice, but from the exam point of view, I think it's nice to bring in. It is much more simpler when you compare to the ICIQ incontinence questionnaire. Yeah. Um, uh, just as you said, it's the same past four weeks are taken into account. Four questions, four questions, fun 
and incontinence funness yeah. frequency urgency nocturia as usual four weeks of uh, history we are including in that and all the questions were 0 to 4 again so we are having a maximum score of 16 and yeah. every element fun and incontinence also uh, uh, measured by bothersome which is not taken into account so when you revise this um, session in the youtube link uh, you will have the full questionnaire with the details of it yeah and uh, regarding the bladder training um, the slight difference is uh, for example if the patient has significant frequency of the symptoms one of the component of bladder training is to purposefully hold the urine divert the attention to something like for example reading or tv or music or something like that so that you try yeah. to hold the urine and uh, gradually increase the functional bladder capacity while you mentioned like starting passing urine every hourly and then slowly by timed voiding uh, increasing the frequency or in decreasing the intermittency of the frequency while yeah. that is good for patients with overflow incontinence or urinary retention or low pressure chronic retention etc where we want the patient to have time to voiding and that too i think maybe like every 4 hourly may be a good thing to start rather than every hourly but yeah. for the patient with frequency symptoms it's exactly opposite you should try the patient should okay. hold the urine for longer time as a part of exercise uh kegels exercise um, you can teach the patient by saying you are as if you are holding to pass urine or the easiest way is holding the flatus that's more easier for patient to understand it is 10 yeah. times they need to do this and hold nicely for 10 times and this has to be done in five sets the easy way to do five sets is uh, as soon as you get up in the morning after brushing and uh, every time before the meal morning afternoon and evening and uh, just before going to bed so five times each as 10 set yeah and there is a bowel leaflet for uh, comparison of treatment options for overactive bladder like uh, male lutes information bowel leaflet you can bring that to that regarding the side effects of uh, solifenacin it is uh, your side effects are correct you can add hypersensitivity that can be added for any medication tamsulosin finasteride mirabegron any medication you can add uh, hypersensitivity to the tablet and uh, the other thing is uncontrolled narrow angle glaucoma you did mention narrow angle glaucoma but if the narrow angle glaucoma is nicely controlled we can still give uh, solifenacin so uncontrolled narrow angle glaucoma is the contraindication I, i'm a bit picky because i want you to get the maximum outcome from the session but uh, presentation wise absolutely fine on the ball i have no concerns as usual you will be absolutely fine okay anything from your side before we start the next scenario um no i think I'm, the only thing is that um i presume that scenario would have then progressed into potential surgical management options um but um you don't know how worried I should be about not getting to that, that um part. yeah the f- first of all don't worry at all not only in this table in any table once the table complete do there is no point in worrying that uh, uh have i progressed till the appropriate questions what the examiner is interested that is yeah. one of the least concern and leave it as it's not of your concern number yeah. one if you worry that during the exam period that will have impact on your subsequent tables which we don't want yeah. number 2 if you worry that after your full day exam is complete say next day when you're discussing with your friends oh i got the scenario in the female and function urology i progressed only till this i don't know whether it's correct or wrong there is no point in worrying anyway done is done okay so yeah. there is a scenario available just to discuss the evaluation of the storage symptoms or active bladder symptoms and the medical management so you may be absolutely gone till the end of the scenario so there is no point in worrying in that aspect so leave that uh, to your consciousness try to make the answers as crisp as possible without losing the major things and uh, which you are good i'm very happy with that so i don't think there is any point in worrying in that aspect okay Thank you. Good. Happy